Hi, this is Syrian Community Network's introductory volunteer video. This video is the first component of our volunteer onboarding process and will be needed to submit Form A for new volunteers. First, thank you so much for deciding to volunteer with us. We fully recognize that none of our programs or initiatives will be possible without our incredible volunteer base. So I wanna emphasize right off the bat what a huge role our volunteers play in ensuring that we as an organization are able to offer comprehensive services at the highest quality to our community. We think of this video and the onboarding steps that follow as absolutely critical. They will equip you with a toolkit you need to volunteer with SCN. So now to jump into our training topics. Today, I will be going over some background information on the refugee resettlement process, as well as SCN's work and how it fits into the community. Obviously, there is so much information on this topic and things have changed a lot over the past eight years with the previous US administration, but this will just be an overview. We feel that it's important our volunteers are informed about issues surrounding refugee resettlement. It contextualizes our work and provides a bit of understanding of some of the experiences our community has had. Next, I will describe the services that SCN offers, as well as what different volunteer roles look like within SCN. And finally, we'll look at next steps of the onboarding process. So let's jump into refugee resettlement. We're going to mostly scratch the surface to give a general understanding of the refugee resettlement process, but we strongly encourage that you continue to stay up to date as to what is happening in our country in terms of refugee intake and do research on the US's refugee resettlement policy since 2011. To begin, we'll go over some key vocabulary. Who is a refugee? According to the UNHCR or the UN High Commissioner on Refugees, a refugee is any person outside the boundaries of their nation state who is unable or unwilling to return to their country of origin owing to a well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, or political opinion. Refugees have the right to international protection. Who is an asylum seeker? An asylum seeker is a person who has left their country and is seeking protection from persecution and serious human rights violations in another country, but who hasn't yet been legally recognized as a refugee and is waiting to receive a decision on their asylum claim. Next, what is a special immigrant visa? A special immigrant visa, or SIV, is an immigration program that grants permanent residence to people who aided the US government abroad. What is resettlement? Resettlement is the transfer of refugees from an asylum country to another state that has agreed to admit them and will ultimately grant them permanent residence. And where does SCN fit in? Once a refugee has been resettled by a local resettlement agency, like Refugee One, Heartland, ECAC, for example, the individual or family will have 90 days of support. After those 90 days, community-based organizations, CBOs, like SCN, will provide ongoing support. I encourage you to look at these next two slides for more information on refugee resettlement in the United States and refugee resettlement in Illinois in particular. So who is Syrian Community Network? We were founded in Chicago in 2015 to support the needs of Syrian families and individuals coming into Chicago. But now since refugee resettlement has changed and the populations served have shifted, we do, what we do today looks a lot different than the work we were doing in 2015. Now, many of our families have been here for four or five years though that could quickly change with the influx of Afghans entering Chicago. Through all of this, we've adapted our mission and values to reflect the work we are doing as we continue to support our families. Our work can be best understood by looking at the departments that make up our many facets. SCN can be broken down into four departments, immigration, advocacy, case management, and education. Let's take a look at immigration. SCN offers free immigration legal services to low-income refugees and immigrants, as well as our new asylum clinic. Refugees have the right to apply for legal permanent residency, or a green card, a year after their arrival in the U.S. and must do so within two years. Refugees are eligible to apply for U.S. citizenship after five years of living in the U.S. if they've adjusted their status to, to legal permanent resident and have met other requirements. 
We can assist clients in the application processes for naturalization, green card, travel documents, asylum, work authorization, fee waivers, or immigration visas. SCN also works with partner organizations to advocate for the refugee and immigrant community. We do this through press conferences, cultural sensitivity trainings, meetings with elected officials, and organizing and attending rallies. Direct service is a major component of the work SCN does. With a team of skilled case managers on a daily basis, we are providing medical support, benefits assistance, administrative assistance with issues at local, state, and federal governments, and employment services. In the past, we have also included family well-being programs, such as our elderly program, work readiness program, women at the wheel, and the teen focus group. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, we have suspended these services, but hope to open them again soon, maybe with the help of some of our volunteers. Lastly is our education department. Our education department consists of two branches, youth education and adult education. Youth education programs include our in-person after-school program, the online homework room, and our summer program. The youth education department also includes education case management, which we'll talk about a little more in a bit. The adult education branch of this department looks a bit different season to season because we're really responsive to the needs and requests of our clients. And we try to run the programs and classes that are the most pertinent to the members of our community. In the past couple of years, we have had an active citizenship class for adults seeking residency in the US. Our after school program or ASP was formed in the fall of 2018. We follow the Chicago Public School school year calendar and serve students from K through sixth grade. The program takes place in our SCN program space and typically runs Monday through Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m. But the timing may change just slightly depending on the students served. In our space, we have a homework room, a community room, and a creative room. Our students rotate throughout these rooms according to their schedule and engage in activities such as art, social emotional learning, science projects, slime, and exploratory play. We also have our online homework room, or OHR. This is a year-round program where we pair students with tutors to receive additional academic support. This program is geared towards elementary, middle, and high school students who need more one-on-one -on -one assistance with their work. Our tutors meet with their students over Zoom. Tutors may support students in English literacy, reading comprehension, math, daily homework, problem solving, and social skills, among other subjects. This program has grown immensely since its inception, and any extra volunteer support is helpful. Our summer program varies year to year, so we'll send out calls for volunteers once we have a better idea of what the summer program will look like. Previously, we held the reading room, which offered classes in Arabic literacy, English literacy, art, and music. The last element of youth education is education case management. Throughout the year, we regularly meet with teachers, administrators, and other community members about how best to support our students in our community. We aid in providing interpretation for the family, and we act as a liaison between the teachers and parents. Additionally, we make referrals to connect families to mental, to mental health services, and we ensure that all students have the materials they need for school. Now moving on to the volunteer role. Each of our departments have varying needs for our volunteers. Currently, we are mainly looking for volunteers in our education department, as well as a few slots for our case management and immigration teams. Our education department has an established volunteer program and relies on the time and commitment of our volunteers in order to run. We are asking for volunteers to assist in our after school program and or our online homework room. The trainings for both of these programs is similar, and if volunteers are willing, they are welcome to be part of both programs. Our case management volunteering structure is still being developed. While we could absolutely use some assistance, we ask for patience as we grow the program. The duties and responsibilities of volunteers interested in case management, either for education or direct service, is currently ad hoc, meaning that we may not have a planned schedule for attendance. With that said, things may change as we develop the program further. In addition, if you're signing up for interpretation services, they will be heavily used in the case management, immigration, and education team. Also, in addition to our ongoing programmatic needs, SCN is excited to resume hosting events for our clients, families, and donors. We will have events throughout the year, which we will rely on volunteer support for. 
If this is something you'd be interested in, make sure to note it on your volunteer application. On this slide, I've listed the duties and responsibilities of volunteers interested in any of these positions. Number one, being on time and present for your slotted times. We understand that life happens. If you cannot attend the session, we just ask for you to provide notice so that we can find a substitute. Number two, staying in contact with your supervisor as they will give you more timely updates on the status of the program. Number three, participating in our weekly meetings. These meetings are not mandatory, but we have them as a space for open communication among volunteers, debriefing difficult interactions, and any other useful discussion. Now for the onboarding next steps. For your volunteer application, Form A, please include the short training worksheet found on our website to ensure that you watch this video, as well as the volunteer agreement. You will be contacted after we receive this information, and we will follow up with a background check in a short phone interview. After those steps are completed, the remainder of the onboarding process will be program specific. Each program will host a Zoom meeting with a recorded video followed by a live Q&A, which will delve into the specifics of working with refugee populations, trauma-informed volunteering, working with children, where to find resources, and more. This can be done either synchronous or asynchronous, but we encourage you to attend live. Lastly, after school program will host an in-person training to get to know the environment of the classroom. This will be either in the form of a professional development week or a shadowing session. For both, you will only need to attend the volunteering days and times that you've already signed up for. The other programs and departments will host equivalent training sessions. All of these processes are subject to change based on the program needs and the volunteer availability. So that completes our video training. Please submit Form A at your earliest convenience and keep an eye on your email for next steps. We cannot begin to emphasize how much we appreciate your commitment to the refugee population in Chicago. So thank you again for taking the time to prepare before joining us. We can't wait to meet you. I've also included some additional resources on the refugee resettlement process, on refugee law and international agreements, and on the refugee experience. These are by no means mandatory, but they might be interesting as you begin working with the refugee population. Thank you so much for joining us today.